Hey guys, it's Adam Plays here, and today we're back for what I think will be a new series on this channel. So, this game is called This is the Police, and instead of me talking about it and explaining what it is, we're going to learn it through together. So, without further ado, let's get started. Starting a new game, we'll remove the current save data. Do you want to continue? Yes. Day 1, July 15th, Monday. Mayor Rogers, sex maniac? C City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boy's resignation. Mark War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere, by the mayor's personal request. And by the way, there are also cutscenes in this, and during those, I'll shut up. So. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least, that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm going to have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially acknowledged her resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? Surprise? You're discussing with me. I've been expecting this bullshit from the mayor. What's the difference? The mayor discussed it with me. Mayor Rogers told me that he wants a fresh face from running Freeburg Police Department, so no, it didn't come as a surprise. Do you already know the name of your successor? No, I think it's a new man. I think it'll be a department veteran. Who cares? No. Of course not, and I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. After a recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor, if the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Perhaps? No way. I'd be happy. Who cares? Sounds possible if he thinks this new office would help him serve the city a little longer. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Bullshit? I don't know. Who the hell is police? No comment. Usually I prefer to answer all your questions, but in this situation I gotta say, no comment. 
Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely? Definitely not. Possibly. How should I know? Possibly. It's often just difficult to say what, what guides policy decisions. Thank you. How's the bat today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire any time soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. Day three. Jack Boyd on his re resignation asked the mayor. Cleanliness of city streets increased by 20%. Civil servants, wages won't be raised this year. Let's go to work again. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? 
don't look into anyone's eyes, could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts, the subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Okay. Would you like to receive tips about how the games work? Show me what you've got. Freebird Police Department organizes upcoming work assignments in the ships for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress, and detectives continue their investigations. You can fr freely move employees between shifts. All officers and detectives possess several important characteristics. Professionalism shows the average level, overall efficiency level of your policeman. A figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable, while those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet, even in a pinch. And individuals of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. Energy is also how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less reliable they work, and a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel and make a critical error on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after working each day and restore one point after each day of rest. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are handed from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of to take the day off, while others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. Okay, so our shift is Kochi, Yancey, Purdy, Tsubaki, Asano, Austin, and Price. And our detectives are Mole, DeBrito, and Armstrong. Let's start today. I've never already played. I played a few days just to test it out. And so, you know, all that. So, you guys are responding to calls in the, is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers on the crime scene before, time t before the timer expires. A mark on this map shows where the call came from. The farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it'll take your officers to travel back and forth, so the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. <gasps> Hit and run at the everyday mall. The easiest way to determine how difficult the task is to check how many units you're allowed to send there. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. Okay, so all this is just telling me how serious. And also telling me that things can be false alarms. So hit and run at the everyday mall. A married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in a parking lot back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver got, jumped out to help, but once he saw that he hit a bum, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. Um, let's see, it sounds serious, so it's like Kochi, and then just gets more experience, Austin. Okay, but anyways, so I'm sorry I've been gone for so long, it's been really complicated, and yeah, but I'm going to be starting a whole bunch of new series soon, and see if any of you guys like them. I'm probably going to, you'll see a lot more, and also I'll be co-recording with another one of my friends, I don't, which you guys haven't met yet, but he's a barrel of laughs, and it'll be a lot of fun. But what I'm going to do is, at least for this series, is... If it's a long cutscene like we had before, I'm going to do a long cutscene and one gameplay. And if it's a shorter cutscene or just gameplay, it'll be two to three. So expect probably about 20 to 30 minute episodes. Actually, pretty long this time. I know. Fight. The last picture show theater. A theater manager reports that during the showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater's security guard. Um, let's see, Yancey and Asano. And, sorry about that, just had to fix something. And, what's on those? And then, uh, let's see, what, can I do anything? No. Hit 
everything goes how it comes when everything goes well the police capture close all the criminals and nobody dies but the truth is sometimes the criminals manage this game just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians dead cops will hurt your own monster and dead citizens pop the mayor even more than the living ones oof gets the mayor hates people and they're caught officers unharmed more professionalism nice and you can see the other gray bar is going down. That's so for Yancey, that's how long it's gonna when that gray bar is going, that's until he gets there. That's the gray bar going down is until they come back and fight. Under caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed, more professionals. Armed robbery at the suburbs. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with their collection of adult movies. The criminals from the car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown, who lives in the suburbs. We'll send Purdy and Tsubaki out. Because Christ is an old, old, old person. Sorry, I'm not And she seems to have alcohol problems. Yeah. Fight. Johnson, Jurgen, and Katz Lauper. A brother and sister clash with each other over their deceased father as well. According to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them and our security guards off tonight. We'll send Kochi and Austin for a second round. So, if you guys want me to play any, if you guys have any ideas for good games that you want to see me record or, you know, commentate, or if you want to see more games like this where I just don't talk all the time, then leave a like down below so I know to do, to do some series like this. And also, I'll be doing. I think the next, I've, I'm going to head back to Minecraft, but I'm also going to, I'm going to do some quarantine, and then some paladins, and then another random Steam game. But I'm not telling you that. You can find out when you click on the video. But anyways, Assault at the Ghetto. The passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then ran away with his guitar and money. So we'll send Nancy a sign on. Christ, don't mess this up. Shoot. Direct orders. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the ground of residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room. Sneak into the house and open the window. Knock, up, knock on the door. Open up police. Turn on the sound and loudspeaker and shout that the house is surrounded. Uh, we'll, sneak in. we'll sneak in. No! No! Frick! We are already down one! Tsubaki, no! How did you. No, Tsubaki, you suck! Fender caught, officer dead. Moment of silence for Tsubaki. Didn't even last five minutes into the first day of the game. Fight. Feather caught, officers unharmed, professional. Yay, Tsubaki, though. Like, what are the chances of losing a cop on the first day? And I'm going to, I'm not going to restart. We're making it fun here. Officers unharmed, yay. Nice job, guys. Well, that shows you that if we think of a hope, we have the power to die, you can find. Well, day two, tw 20, tw 2400, let's end there. And then just for this one, it's going to be an extra long one. Um, I'm going to do a second day of gameplay. If you think you, you'll need a couple of extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come and work overtime. But if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. So, let's see who's on my ship for tomorrow. So, Bobby Vendal, Robin Samadhi, Grant Birch, Birch Jr., and Roy. Uh, okay. I can't do anything with that, so let's end the day. Should be. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks... I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure. 
but from the shame of it all. Internal affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any of the cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers, and Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Day 3, July 17th, Wednesday. Francis Kendrick announces retirement date. Legendary singer Gerano Crespo comes to Freeburg. Construction of Cinema Museum postponed. Again. Let's go to work. Yeah. <laughs> I know this one's going to be a long one, but yeah, it's the first episode. We've got to make it a little bit longer than normal. When, police, when a police officer is too tired to be effective, he'll ask for a day off. Sometimes officers will request days off even when they are full, when they are full strength. Some of the reasons you'll hear are far-fetched, while some are very serious. Don't overindulge your subordinates, but don't antagonize them either. Remember that everyone's got secrets, and you've got to make sure these guys have your back. In addition to performance ranks, police officers also progressed. Profess Frank. Employees began at the lowest rank and would be elevated in rank with one, two, or three stripes. Once a week, you can pass out stripes and improve the rank of any employee. If you think that no one is worthy of that honor some week, you can postpone the ceremony until later. The insignias won't go out until your people are looking ready. Employees of rank not only increase their professionalism, but also learn to command. Whenever a ranking officer is on the scene, his or her colleagues are more likely to perform better than usual. 
Sometimes when cop gets ranked, they start thinking more seriously about their jet service. This can be less drinking and more time spent on the job. Some of them might even turn out to be dependable. So... I'm... Since we... She's the only woman on our staff. I'm going to give Grant and Insignia. And then I'm going to save the other one. Because I don't know who else earns it. Let's play this one. Sweet Ginger Green. Pair of Picking Rick Time 5. Whatever that said. Hmm, not bad. Let's learn how to fi hire and fire cops. Yeah, let's get these let's get these garbage kids out of here. Police station, labor market. You have a number of a paid job openings for which you can hire any available applicant. Job spots are temporary separate between officers and detectives. I want to hire you. I want to hire Jake Rushing. Um, we'll hire you for shift. Three, no, we need shift B since we lost one. If we grounds for determination, no one asks any questions. You might need to fire them anyway, legality be damned, but that can only do an additional proceedings. I will staff become more worried about keeping their jobs than they are about actually doing their job. Another way to free up a slot is to have a police officer killed, but that's not really a valid option. Right? Right? Yeah, right. Okay, so fire legally. She didn't come into work. She came to work drunk. She's too old, or she failed three assignments in a row. And look at her. She's old. I'm sorry that I'm not being sexist or ageist, but she looks old. I don't see how she could, you know, go ta go tackle a young adult. So I'm sorry. We have to fire you. This is where I'm going to also fire Birch Jr. Because... Oh, you're not old enough? Oh... Hey, let's fire Birch. There we go. Fire the two of them, and I'm gonna hire him for shift A. Helgo and Daniel, for, all for A. Now I think I'm gonna get Caleb for B, and I'm gonna make, get Mark for B. Backlog? Nothing. What's the backlog for? Yeah. I'm gonna... Okay, so these guys will be fired after tomorrow. Vandalism at the St. John's Cathedral. We received the frightened call from the local cathedral. In the morning, the abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols, and some have been broken in pieces. It sends there are even marks on the shovel, but the abbot would say no more. Well, what's in Stavali and Birch Jr.? Not gonna, I'm not gonna send Roy and Birch on any, since I know I'm firing. No point of sending someone that I'm gonna fire. I'll send them if I need if, if I just need to. Vandalism at the Atticus Tower. Businessman Harley Jones looking out his window saw two teenagers teenagers scratching offensive slogans on his new car. Send Vandal and well, we'll send Grant and Vandal. Grant and Vandal. Go, I believe they were. Ginger Green, sweet Ginger Green. Oh, wow, this music. Uh, well, time to put a new song in. Let's put something else in. Let's see what we got. We got this one, which is Frederick Chopin, Nocturne in B Major. I think what we are going to do is, at least every day, we're going to start off with Sweet Ginger Green. I can barely hear it. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be a little quiet so you, listen, so you guys can listen to the music. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and Daiko to a dangerous criminal who she saw on television this morning. Let's call her to sit in a window eating a burger. Uh, you know what? I don't know. It could be it could be a false alarm. So I'm gonna send my bad cops. And if anything happens, this hopefully go wrong. Ooh, vandalism. Shoot! And they're escaped. Officers unharmed. Oh my gosh. Van Dahl, you have one. Van Dahl and Grant, you have one job. Ugh. Oh, I still have one more slot. Yeah, no, I hired Lydia when I could. Suspicious individual. False alarm. The Rages had mistaken retired Frank Nero for a fugitive in question. 
Oh, sorry, Mr. Miro. Red caps don't know me. That, what's this one? Mr. Boy, my bouncer stuck himself with Mexican food again, now he can't get off the can. Meantime, the line outside the club is stretched around the block. We got someone outside who can tell the cool guys from the punks. Oh, well, I don't want to send Skillvolley. I'm going to send Vandal. Actually, no, I'm going to send Samadhi. Burst Jr. Well, I'm sending Burst Jr. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see if sending, like, the bad guys on that will be a good idea. <sighs> Sorry, guys, it's late when I'm doing this, and I'm also a little sick still, so at the, for the next few days, wait, I'm not sounding so good. Then, uh, you know why. Drug sales at Christopher at Sands Ice Cream. I'm not going to say Christopher G. Sands, just going to say Sands. An anonymous rape disclaimer. A, a clown carrying a balloon. A clown carrying balloons at this gate rink is selling crack to people. Oh, that's funny. Um, I don't think that this is a threat, but just in case it is, I'm gonna send Stavali and Samadhi. Hopefully use Stavali to get other people up. Let's see. Sorry, Chief, but I quit. I wanted to have one more cash. I can't remember where it's done. This is what can see when my team is Guess this one's got a big crap. Oh my gosh! Well, I mean, it's good because he had such low professionalism. So now we know those are worth it to send bad cops on because they could be, at least this one, they can be kicked. They can be kicked out. Oh, wow, 4,500 I'll take that. Shh. So, oh no. Suicide threat at the Fleet Street. Naked man carrying a canister of gas on his throat to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum comes for popular game. He's drunk. Send both of these guys. Uh, that guy's drunk. Uh, that's definitely good. We're probably gonna get a direct call. Duh, but uh, so now we gotta watch out and make sure that people don't. Whenever people do something like that, that they don't. Okay, we we gotta make sure that we read it and make sure that the, there's not a possibility that the cops can leave us. And if there is, we send a low professionalism cop. As police arrive, a clown is seen making a balloon animals for the kids. Take the clown on, onto the ice and round up on the witnesses. Cover up in a raincoat and pretend to be an illicit customer. Careful watch the clowns with stands. Careful watch the clowns with stands. Yeah. And he was selling drugs. Wow. Sounds like he got to sell drugs. Okay. Suicide threat report. Yes. Nice job. Nice job, guys. End day. And everyone's pretty tired, so let's go back. Let's go back to this shift. But yeah, if there's, if, uh, so I so and this is what we'll expect. We got two days worth of gameplay in, and one full day worth of cutscenes. And so this will probably, if it goes like this, it'll be every three days. So probably about a hundred, about a hundred. Well, it's 180 days, it says, and I don't know if we'll be working weekends, so we'll have, a, we'll have a decent fun time with this. But that's, of course, if you guys want it. If you guys do, again, if you guys want it, please leave a like down below. And don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and ring that little bell to decide to know when you hear some of the great content that I will be creating and that I'll be creating with other people pretty soon. So until then, I will see you all later. So go.